all right so i started with the character modeling first i imported a reference sheet and i started sculpting the head and the face once the sculpting details were over i used the poly build tool for retopolizing the face i used basically snapping to the surface and mirror modifier with shrink wrap modifier to retopolize the face I didn't create any hair object as I was using the helmet for my character and I made the helmet and other body parts using simple box modeling technique As my character is pretty low poly for the textures I did not want to use any normal or high texture so i basically grabbed a real image of clothes like this jeans shoes this jacket and sweater and i aligned the uvs according to these and it came out pretty good now all the details are in the diffuse itself for the face i just painted a little bit details in blender itself All right. Then I exported it as FBX for Mixamo, and I feel that this pose is better than T pose, as uh, it has less initial stretching. So it works pretty good with Mixamo Auto Rigger. And I used this static T pose for downloading the FBX because I didn't need any animations. All right. So here I am in Unity and I'm using this uh, third person character controller starter asset from uh, Unity. I installed it from the package manager and this starter asset uses the Unity's new input system. So when you try to play it, you may get the error of reinstalling the dependencies. So you can reinstall the dependencies from tools starter asset but if you get the error again and again this may be because of the input system so for that you can go to project setting and search for input and in player settings you can find active input handling and just select it and set it to both Then I installed the universal render pipeline, created a new URP asset and converted the project to universal render pipeline. So then I imported the FBX file from Mixamo and I did a little bit of change in the materials. So I used two separate materials, one for the helmet and one for the body because for helmet I used the metallic workflow and for body i use the specular workflow all right so to swap the existing unity character with our own character we need to create an animation avatar so for that select the fbx file and in the rig select the animation type to humanoid this will create a new avatar click apply so here is the kid avatar now just drag the fbx into the scene just position it at zero so it matches with the existing character now i'll right click on this prefab and unpack it here so this has three parts one is the armature and two are the meshes so i'll just select these three and drag it on top of the existing player armature now in the player armature 
I'll delete the existing geometry and skeleton. Save the prefab. And now, in the player armature prefab, you can see in the animator, there's an avatar. So in place of the armature avatar, we'll plug the kid avatar that we just generated. So now all the setting is done. Now if you press play, our character is working. For some environment components, I use this material pack from Unity Asset Store by Yugush. This pack has about 50 free materials and they are very good quality materials. I modified the environment prefab. I deleted all the walls and uh, stairs. Just use the floor and some boxes and apply the metal materials. Then I modeled some more environment like these walls. I used this door from one of my previous projects and I modeled these wall objects. And again, I did not want any normal or height map. So I modeled all the details within this and I used simple material for all the crevices and all the walls. For the ball game object, I model these lights as separate objects because I wanted to change the color of the lights as the ball passes through these. So I kept them individually and just imported them as a single game object. And then I imported all these models into my scene. Like for this game base, I also modeled a separate collider base, this one, because the default collider creates a very complicated shape for this. So I made my own collider with very basic shapes. And for this, we also do not need the mesh renderer. It will be only used as a collider. So I removed the mesh render component and added mesh collider. So now it is used only as a collider for our player. Then I duplicated these lights and added some material to it. In the same way I imported this wall asset. Initially I made separate objects for these walls but then I just merged them together to create this complete wall as one object. Now, I don't know much about programming or scripting, but I learned it from fellow YouTubers like uh, CodeMonkey. So I wrote some basic scripts for grabbing an object. So basically, I created a controller script in which I use the raycast method and whenever you press the E key, a ray is cast and it identifies if the object is pickable or not. For the objects, I used a simple script to make them pickable. So the ray cast identifies if an object is already picked and if it is, then it returns. And then if you press the key E again, it adds a value of force. So here I have added a force value like this throw force and it adds this force to the vector transform of that object. Then I also added a animation rigging on top of the existing animation and I used two bone IK constraint so that whenever you press the E key, the hand moves into the position of the object. Then I also use this bouncing glow button animation for a simple particle animation. And all these are linked to the player armature. Then I created these ball objects. 
and I again use the same script attached it to this component and I just serialize field this value so that I can change it in the inspector itself. So this throw force can be adjusted for different objects. For changing the color of the light, I used a basic box collider and used it as a trigger. And then I wrote a simple material change script. In this script, it identifies the renderer and gets the emission color of the material component. And whenever the ball passes through that trigger, it changes it to my selected color. I used a similar approach with this goal object. So I used a collider as a trigger and I used the same material change script for this as well as a sound whenever the ball touches this object. And finally, I created a UI using Text Mesh Pro. I created a timer which counts to 90 seconds. Then I created a counter for the goals and a high score, which is displayed at the end. I also created the main menu and exit buttons. In the end, I added this global volume to add some post process effects like this color adjustment and bloom. And I also added a post processing effect. If you select the universal render pipeline asset, you can add it in the inspector here. All right, so this is how I created this basic game and I have built it and uh, you can download it. I'll put the link in the description and you can check how much highest score you can make within 90 seconds. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.